The energy of the arena, it creates itself. As we started this process and did the focus groups with our season ticket holders, the biggest thing that we heard from them is don't mess with the soul of the bowl. So in the case of UD Arena, what we really looked to do is to offer new inventory in terms of premium environments, but also looked closely at the distribution. We wanted to bring fans down a lot closer to the action, so we're going to have four terrace suites in each of the corners of the court. We'll have, we'll have couches and seating area here, and then we'll have a countertop with a sink and cabinets and, and TVs up on that wall and a graphic wall. Out here you'll have a glass railing all the way around, you'll have some fixed seating here in the front and then some high top tables uh, back here and some bistro tables in the back. You're kind of on display there with the terrace suite so everybody will be able to see you and know that so-and-so is up in that suite. So this is where the club seats will be. Okay, we'll have 126 on this side. Before, where people came up the aisle and went left or right, now they can just go straight out to the concourse. These club seats are a great kind of middle ground for folks, but with those it's a much wider, a plusher padded seat. Uh, you're going to have the most leg room you'll find anywhere else in the arena for the most part. And they will also have access to our club lounge. Um, we're actually going to have two of those, one on either side in what used to be the west wing and the east wing. These are for all the club seat folks on this side, plus some flyer front row people, plus some other high end donors that will be able to come into the space. Private little area, full bar, seating area, TVs in here and all that and then we're trying to work through what the food and beverage piece of it, and we're gonna let them help us decide what they want in here. And up there is that 400 level landing that we're adding. So we took out the last couple of rows of seats, created a deck, cantilevered out, overlooked the river towards campus, have an elevator, have a couple of restrooms up there. We'll put some food and beverage portables up there. It'll be that ADA seating, so we'll have ADA seating and all seating price levels. We're adding an upper deck to the east side of the 400 seats, um, which is important because it deals with the ADA distribution issue, but it also captures views out to the river and sort of harkens back to campus. So there's going to be an incredible exterior transformative quality to the arena as well. It's not just about what's happening inside. The outside is going to feel very different. And for the first time in probably the arena's history, you're going to get a sense of that activity as you're coming up Edwin Moses Drive. Tell me what your favorite area will be. Probably the expanded concourse. With the introduction of the 360 degree concourse, the fans are gonna flow through the facility much better. They're gonna have access to distributed restrooms and concessions, so queuing is gonna be diminished. Three of these corners have this real wide, high ceiling concourse, okay? So again, it just, it helps the circulation, all that, gives us graphic opportunity and all that, uh, additional portables and, and areas in here, but just kind of a unique connecting point that we never had before. This is where the change really happens of what people normally witness. So before they used to walk through our eight foot wide concourse there, now they'll go around that way to our 18 foot wide concourse. The condition of the infrastructure in the building, some of the piping and mechanical systems are 30 years old, so we certainly had to invest time and consideration into those to future-proof the facility and make sure that they're going to have a sustainable facility for, for 30 years to come. We also took advantage of modern-day technologies to make the building more energy efficient, so new LED lighting, we placed the mechanical on geothermal wells, taking advantage of the proximity to the river. So that's certainly a trend in our design perspective as well, is looking at the operational implications and how to really look at the consumption around these facilities. But that's our new mechanical area with our two chillers that will climate control the building with the geothermal pumps. Well, we like to call ourselves the epicenter of college basketball, and, and I think our attendance numbers over the years, not only for our men's basketball games, but also for uh, the NCAA First Four has, has kind of proven that. And we talked to not only the NCAA, but some of our other long-term partners. We said, okay, what features as we go through this process will help us keep this in Dayton or help us moving forward. Uh, so the NCA they provided us nine items, everything from upgrading the, the locker rooms downstairs to more premium seating to some more flexible areas. We've incorporated all those into this project, so we're, we're pretty excited about that. Three phase, obviously the project is will be done next November. What's the budget? Right now it's sitting around uh, 74, 75 million dollars. This facility 
is special. I mean, it really has a sentimental environment and a really strong fan base that is protective of that environment. And so our goal coming in and really when we approach any arena renovation project is to figure out how to honor the sentimental environment of these buildings, but really bring it up to modern day standards. 